Okay, so let's have another uh, uh, simple example. Uh, this is a weather example. So the idea is that we can basically have three types of weather. Uh, fine, cloudy or rain. And we assume this following behaviour, that after a fine day, the weather is equally likely to be cloudy or rain. And after a cloudy day, the probabilities are one quarter of being fine, one quarter cloudy and one half rain. And after rain, the probabilities are one quarter fine, one half cloudy, and one quarter rain. So we notice that, first of all, that after a fine day, there's no chance of it actually being fine. So um, we're looking at a, a, a situation where we have weather somewhat similar to England. All right, so we can now try to just draw that up. So here's, a, here's our diagram. So let's go with with the sunny day or the fine day, we have that there's a one half chance of it uh, becoming uh, cloudy and a one half chance of it becoming um, raining and a zero chance of it actually staying fine. For our cloudy day, we have a one quarter chance of it staying cloudy, a one half chance, one half chance of it being rainy, and a one quarter chance of it being sunny. And then finally, on the rainy days, we have it a one quarter chance of it being rainy the next day, and we have a one half chance of it uh, just becoming cloudy, and we have a what's left, one quarter chance of it becoming fine. Okay, so now we can encode that uh, transition information into our transition matrix. And so we see on our fine day that there's a zero chance of staying fine and then a one half chance of either being cloudy or rain, rainy. On a cloudy day, we we uh, have a quarter chance of being fine the next day, a quarter chance of being cloudy the next day, and one half chance of being of uh, raining the next day. And finally, encoding the rain, rainy day, the rainy day will convert to a fine day with one quarter chance. Next day will be one half chance of being cloudy and a one quarter chance of being rain. Okay, so there's our transition matrix, and that will be the way that we can move from one one state variable, one probability distribution to another. So suppose on day zero, we know that the the weather is rainy, so there's a hundred percent chance of it of it raining. It's raining. So our state vector at time zero is zero zero one. So let's have a look at what happens into the future. So the probability, the the state vector after one day is just going to be two times x zero. So we multiply out the transition matrix with the state vector and we get a probability of one quarter of being sunny, one half being cloudy and one quarter being raining. We do this again. So we calculate what x2 is. We get this distribution, 13, 3 over 16, 3 eighths, 7 sixteenths, which by the way have to add up to one, the, the components. And then we'd like to know what happens, say, at the end of the week. So using this model, we could work out what the the weather is at the end of the week from the weather at the start of the week by just multiplying the transition matrix raised to the seventh power. So the fractions are actually getting a little messy now, so why don't we go and start using decimals instead? So here they are using decimals. We can plug this into our favorite uh, numerical software package and uh, then calculate out what the weather would be at at, um, at the end of the week and we get these these uh, results here but you notice they're actually starting to look a bit like 0 0.2 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 so it seems like there may be some limiting behavior going on here and indeed if we go a little bit further we go out to two weeks or 15 days we actually see that the result is getting much closer to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 so that gives us a suggestion that 
um, the limiting behaviour is going to be given by this um, state vector, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And actually you can check this and you can find that T transition op operator, transition matrix operating on this Q actually does equal Q. So this leads on to the very important definition of a steady state vector. So for a stochastic matrix T, a steady state vector for T is a probability vector Q such that T times Q is equal to Q. So T operating on this steady state vector remains steady, it stays the same. So um, to find such a uh, steady state vector we need to solve TQ equals Q. Now that's exactly the same as TQ minus Q equals zero and that's the same as TQ minus identity matrix times Q is equal to zero and it's essentially solving T minus I times Q is equal to zero. So we're just trying to find the null space of T minus I and of course this is actually the uh, eigenspace associated with one then that that space will be the space of all steady state vectors. Now actually you see that in, for the case of n equals 2 a 2 by 2 transition matrix we, we can actually solve this problem e easily and directly. Uh, we do this by just observing the structure of, of the transition matrix. So each column must add up to 1 and so if we make the entry here, um, if we make a, we call that P, then we know that the other entry has to be 1 minus P. And on the second column, if we make this entry up here, Q, then the other entry has to be 1 minus Q. Now given that we're interested in T minus identity, we've set this up in such a nice way that the ones drop out, and so we're left with a matrix of this form which reduces to this form. Now we observe that the x2 entry has to be free and that the relationship between x1 and x2 is given by px1 is equal to qx2. So we can write down what x1 and x2 is. It's going to be equal to the free variable times, uh, well it's going to be minus it's going to be q q on p one now it's a bit annoying having this division so we can write that out as x2 on p times qp and this term the x2 on p is arbitrary so it's an arbitrary constant so we can actually get rid of that division and just call that, say, a new free variable x2 prime, for instance. All right, so that's our general solution. We need to look for the particular solution, which is a uh, probability vector. And so we just need to divide out by the appropriate factor to ensure that the entries add up to 1. And that's exactly what we get here, the stochastic vector or the probability vector that we need, which is a solution to the steady state problem, is given by um, Q on Q, P, and then mold or divided by P plus Q. The other cases where the P and the Q um, are actually equal to zero, uh, we can do as individual cases. Whereas we can show that actually